When an orange-mouthed tarantula and a scarlet-mouthed katydid cross paths, neither plays nice. With her velvet coat and fancy gloves, the tree-dwelling orange-mouthed tarantula is no stranger to the high life. But despite being an uptown girl, she has a low-down mean streak. They are absolutely voracious predators. These guys are taking down frogs and lizards with no problem. Behind her pedipalps, huge fangs like ice picks are as brutal as any in the spider world. At the tips of her forelegs, dense tufts of hairs form pads known as scopulae, enabling her to scale sheer surfaces with ease. Basically, they're ambush predators. They're sitting still, waiting till something comes close, and then they just zip out and grab it, put the chelicera into it, and just pump their prey full of venom. But the orange-mouthed tarantula isn't the only one looking for easy conquests. The scarlet-mouthed katydid has a ruthless agenda of her own. Delicate legs that can leap or lacerate. And a painted mouth with the power to pulverize. Clearly signal this Katie did's murderous intent. She'll eat the flesh of any downed animal. They can be quite savage. Powerful mandibles quickly dismantle this grasshopper. Carrying off limbs like petals. She's an expert at locating takeout dinners. Long antennae act like portable radar to help size up her prospects. Muscular legs lined with spines can lash out to puncture prey or skip town completely. She can use them to propel herself into the air in a very athletic manner. One push, and she's airborne in a flash. The Katie did's powerful legs help her get to the front of the dinner line fast. But when she lands a meeting with the orange mouth tarantula, who will get the upper hand and who will lose their head? Next, a David and Goliath duel to the death. Then, two tribes wage war. In the Costa Rican jungle, an orange-mouthed tarantula is a social climber with a serious appetite. Not far away, a scarlet-mouthed katydid boasts more than looks that kill. When these mortal rivals clash, good manners go out the window. The orange-mouthed tarantula's venomous fangs tear victims apart. The scarlet-mouthed katydid fights back with vicious mandibles. Which one will live to see another day? From neighboring branches, the katydid and the tarantula size each other up. The katydid launches. But Close Up finds itself next to a giant. The katydid tries to escape. 
but fatally underestimates the tarantula's speed. Monster fangs slam into the katydid's body. This tarantula's bite has caused a ridiculous amount of damage very, very fast. Spiked daggers rake through soft flesh as the katydid kicks impotently. She's just grinding away with these toothed chelicera and basically turning this katydid into soup. Death by tarantula is not a nice way to go. The katydid isn't going without a fight. But she's locked in a spider death hold. The orange mouth tarantula puts the fight beyond doubt. And she gets an unexpected bonus. A side serving of the katydid's unborn babies. And if that weren't undignified enough, she silk wraps the scarlet mouth so her meal stays in one piece while she slurps it down. Really, who would want to be a bug? Their lives are so full of peril, and the way that they end is always messy. When a balloon-winged katydid takes on a tree centipede. It's a battle of the bad guys with only one winner. At first glance, it looks like a green leaf swaying harmlessly in the breeze. But there's nothing harmless about the balloon-winged katydid. The simplest way to describe the balloon-winged katydid is that it's a mobile leaf with razor-sharp jaws. It's an ambush hunter with a very straightforward attack strategy. Rush, grab, tackle, eat alive. As a hunter, the balloon-winged katydid has it all. Long antenna to detect prey, and danger. Huge hind legs. For jumping and kicking. But up front is the serious weaponry. There are two rows of massive spines on the front four legs, and the balloon-winged katydid basically uses them to pin the prey down in a spiked cage. A fellow katydid is easy meat. Legs, wings, head, gone. But what will happen when this ambush hunter crosses paths with the freight train of the forest? This is a killer with a need for speed. A tree centipede that's as long as it is ferocious. The tree centipede has 21 pairs of pointy legs to grip any surface and any prey. Plus one pair of venom claws that plunge into its victim's bodies, injecting fatal neurotoxins. Of all the animals in my lab, it's the centipedes that are the scariest animals because they can just climb all over the place and they do it fast and they've got a strong venomous bite. It's a hyperactive carnivore with a big appetite. So a large katydid should be an easy snack. But don't count on it. The blooming katydid isn't one to run away at the first sign of a predator. Remember, this is an animal that's used to winning fights. 
What will happen when the prize fighter meets the runaway train? Next, two hard hitters go head to head. Then, a serial spider hunter meets a forest commando. And later, showdown. Claws versus Jaws. Of all the bugs in this habitat, these are two of the baddest. Tonight, the balloon-winged Katie did is out looking for dinner. So is the tree centipede. And it's picked up a Katie did's chemical signal. The centipede storms in, but stops. The Katie did backs off. It's all the hesitation the tree centipede needs. If it's a large prey item, they will literally wrap around. Their back end is capable of holding on to the prey, so they're both wrapping and grabbing with front and back end. Powerful animal. With one trademark blow from its venom claws, the centipede delivers the knockout. The tree centipede is venomous enough that it has a big effect on essentially anything that it bites, everything from invertebrates to vertebrates. It's a strong, potent venom. The Katie did is alive, but helpless. Its savage mandibles and spiky legs are useless. The centipede's powerful jaws now go to work. Ripping, tearing, feeding. Centipedes are voracious predators. By the time she's finished with this Katie did, there's nothing left. In Hollywood, the underdog often wins. But when Mother Nature's writing the script, there's usually a sting in the tail. When a black jungle stalker and a black-faced Katie did go head to head, dark forces will be unleashed. forest floor is choked with debris. It should be easy to hide in the shadows. But in the bug world, even the shadows can kill. Stalkers give everyone the creeps. And the black jungle stalker is creepy enough to ruin any picnic. It prowls around, stops, and just watches from the shadows, absolutely motionless. The first thing its prey are likely to see is a face full of fangs. Then again, the attack is so quick, so violent, the victim never knows what hit it. The secret to the spider's incredible athleticism lies in its long tapered leg. They're hydraulically operated. A system of valves controls the flow of blood into each limb. When the valve fully opens, the sudden surge pumps the leg up, ready for takeoff. This is a spider that can really hurl itself into the air when it goes for a strike. 
so it can even give low-flying insects a good reason to reconsider their altitude. The black stalker's sleek body is covered with fine hairs. Some, on its long limbs, act as super-sensitive motion detectors that react to the slightest change in even a breath of air. Those long sensory hairs on the spider's legs are so sensitive they can even detect when an insect flaps its wings. The black jungle stalker isn't the only stealthy killer on the forest floor. A terrifying face looms out of the dark with its hideous tooth-like grin and homicidal stare. The black-faced Katie did is a stone-cold psychopath. These Katie dids have black war paint on their faces. It camouflages them so they look less distinctively like a Katie did and instead blend into the background more. This mobile medieval torture chamber is always ready to rumble. No executioner's blade was ever as sharp as the Blackface's fierce mandibles. And its powerful legs and wings are not only superbly camouflaged, they get it out of trouble fast. But what happens when the psychopath and the stalker meet at close quarters? Next, mortal combat on the rainforest floor. Then, heavy hitters go head to head. In the rainforest leaf litter, two warriors prepare to engage in mortal combat. The Black Jungle Stalker is poised to strike. This killer has large fangs and paralyzing venom. The Katydid counters with sawtooth limbs and razor-sharp mandibles. Which combination has the winning edge? In this battle, it really comes down to whoever's fastest, whoever has the best angle, whoever has the speed at the last minute. Maybe even who starts first, but we're down to it. With its antennae probing, the blackface goes on the offensive. The jungle stalker doesn't demur. It reaches forward. The katydid darts off to rethink its battle plan. It decides to attack again from the side. But with its hydraulic legs, this spider can move any which way. Huge fangs puncture the katydid's protective armor. The black face bucks and kicks, but the stalker's fangs are deep and trigger a ticking time bomb. At this point, the clock is at two minutes to midnight, but the spider still has to be extremely careful of the katydid's spiked legs and mandibles because if it gets even the slightest chance to use them, it will, even as it draws its final breath. Keeping the katydid's limbs out of harm's way, the stalker maintains its steely grip. The kicks become feeble, and the maniacal grin becomes a death rictus. This is an enormous kill for the black jungle stalker. It's the equivalent of a lion bringing down a zebra single-handedly. This is one mighty hunter. The black jungle stalker feasts. When it's had its fill, the leftovers furnish a second banquet. 
for the bugs of tomorrow. When a banana spider clashes with an orange-horned katydid, it's a battle to die for. There are many femme fatales in the rainforest, but the orange-horned katydid is the ultimate mean girl. This is a body slamming, take no prisoners, bite your head off type. And trust me, when she's in a fighting mood, you don't want to mess with her. A sit and wait predator. Very little escapes this consummate murderess. Those huge compound eyes give the cat a very good vision. And the long antenna allow her to feel and sense prey from a great distance. So another predator would have to mount a surprise attack in order to have any kind of competitive advantage. Tangling with this bug is a daunting prospect. She's armed to the teeth. Savagely spiked back legs are spring-loaded weapons that deliver a lethal kick or launch her out of danger in a single bound. These muscular hind limbs allow a katydid to jump up to 20 times its body length. Now, even on a human Olympic world record long jumper can jump a distance maybe five times his body length. So this insect makes our most stellar athlete look pathetic by comparison. This hapless cricket could kick itself or straying into the katydid's murderous clutches. The only type of hugs that the orange horn katydid gives are fatal ones. She wraps them up with the spiked arms, piercing them with the spines, and then goes in for some hardcore mouth action from which they will never recover. Two sets of feelers help her work out the size and shape of her meal. Wickedly sharp mandibles with hardened black tips mangle the cricket's soft tissue. With her belly full, the leftovers are discarded like yesterday's lunch. The orange-horned katydid isn't the only ruthless female in this forest. With a sleek body, slender tapered legs, and attractive markings, the female banana spider is a bug world beauty queen. She rules her world ruthlessly from her webs that she weaves with spun gold. Concealed in her golden castle, the deadly queen waits for her victims to come by. A prey item has come in, she feels the vibrations, and she rushes down to grab it. With her victim trapped, the banana spider shows her true colors. And it's not a pretty sight. Behind hairy feelers, known as pedipalps, are large curved fangs that inject powerful venom, then tear the prey apart. A tiny leaf hopper is just a snack. Next time, the beauty queen will be looking to supersize her meal. But not all of the banana spider's conquests are disposed of so easily. The orange-horned katydid has wings. What happens when the ultimate mean girl is on a collision course with a high-wire huntress? Next. Female killers fight for their lives. Then, a guilt-edged destroyer takes on a deadly assassin. And later, Fight Club in the forest.
In the moonlit jungle, a banana spider sits patiently in her silken death trap, waiting to welcome her next victim. Not far away, a female orange-horned katydid loiters with murderous intent. Two female killers at the top of their game are about to do battle. Dripping with toxic venom, the banana spider's fangs can take out any prey. But the orange-horned katydids, spiky limbs, and razor-sharp mandibles could easily cut her enemy clean in half. Keen for a kill, the orange-horned katydid launches straight into danger. The banana spider approaches with caution. She's tapping that katydid with her front leg to see whether the katydid has much give. Is it able to get loose? The katydid pokes back, but the beauty queen now has her opponent in her sights. As long as the katydid can hold the spider's fangs at bay, it has some chance of surviving this. But defending yourself while being tangled in strong and sticky silk is a pretty tall order. The katydid struggles to escape, but finds itself deeper in the web. The banana spider seizes its chance. Sharp fangs pierce the katydid's abdomen, delivering their toxic payload. Even as the venom shuts down her nervous system, the orange-horned katydid tries to bite through the silken trap. The beauty queen approaches again, the katydid isn't giving up. She fights furiously. This is a great example of how deeply entrenched the will to survive is with these animals. She just keeps on fighting, no matter how bad the odds. Eventually, the katydid's struggles grow feeble. The web weaver delivers the death blow. It's been a titanic battle. The beauty queen wraps the spoils and begins her long victory feast. She doesn't bother with regal table manners. Digestive enzymes break down the katydid's body, turning soft tissue into a protein shake. In the bug world, Beauty queens don't get their kudos from crowning ceremonies. They get their kicks when their rivals are trash on the forest floor. What happens when a destructive katydid clashes with a tent spider? The home ground advantage may not be enough. From a distance, it looks like a misty cloud in a rainforest canopy. Don't be deceived. Enter this gossamer nightmare, and you're on a guaranteed journey through hell. It's the hunting ground of the tent spider. And worse still, where there's one tent spider, there are hundreds. Tent spiders live in groups. Each spider has its own web, but it's connected by frame lines. And the big advantage of this is that they're able to feel vibrations throughout the colony. This is particularly helpful if a potential predator comes through. This fly has made a fatal error. The tent spider senses vibrations. It drops onto its prey in a split second. They grab it in their third legs, and then they wrap it up. 
using their fourth legs to pull swaths of silk. They wrap up their prey very, very effectively. Once the victim is wrapped, it's bite time. Behind feelers called pedipalps are menacing fangs that curve inwards to pierce and rip their prey. Within moments, the tent spider is back at the top of her silken dome, devouring her tightly wrapped snack. Just yards away, also prowling for a snack, another equally terrifying rainforest fighter. The destructive Kitty did. Its super long antennae detect far off prey. The antenna are at least as long as the body, so this allows the Katy to sense prey approaching from quite some distance away. They're incredibly active and mobile, just cruising all the time, checking out, getting the cues, trying to get that little elusive chemical trail to tell it what's approaching or what's recently been around. Its lime green body is near perfect camouflage. When it's time to eat, this bug is all business. Whether it's gorging on a giant cicada or disemboweling a live caterpillar. The destructive Katie did and the tent spider are both sit and wait hunters, but they still take the occasional midnight stroll. Tonight, one of them will regret not staying home. Next, a lethal encounter and a cloud of death. Then, turf warfare in meat ant territory. And later, two killer huntsmen go head to head. Strung across the rainforest canopy is a silken cloud of death. Or anything that enters, there's no guaranteed escape. The spiders will attack any prey that's small enough for it to handle. This destructive Katie did has few rivals on terra firma. But when she takes to the air in these parts, she's vulnerable. The tent spiders have lousy vision, but they are incredibly sensitive to vibrations. And so they're very, very responsive to airborne vibrations and vibrations in their silk. The Katie did's unplanned landing is met by a barrage of legs and spider silk. They wrestle frantically. As long as the katydid is stuck in the web, it is at great risk of becoming prey to the tent spider. It needs to cut its way out and fast. If those jaws do break free, the fight could turn in an instant. Katie did has really big, nasty jaws that could totally do in this spider. It's important to the spider to keep that Katie did as far away as it possibly can from its body while still entangling it further or wrapping it up further in silk. The Katie did tries to kick through the silk with its sturdy hind legs. 
It snips at the web. The spider must move fast. What it needs to do is it needs to get in there, bite the katydid, and pump as much venom as it can in there, but still make sure that that katydid can't bite it. The tent spider makes its move. <laughs> Now it's up to the venom to do its deadly work. Even as it begins shutting him down, the katydid continues to fight. But it's too late. Today, venom wins. And the silken cloud of death claims another victim.